Hi there. Welcome to another week, another flow with Abby. So for this flow, getting into some joint and ligament opening. I absolutely love Ian Yoga because as somebody who's very active, I usually don't take enough time to get into the parts of my body that support my muscles, joints and ligaments. And that is really where yoga, where yin yoga focuses on. So this flow is really designed to be a nice, uh, somewhat quick, hip and spine opener. So if you run, if you do a lot of weightlifting, um, even if you do light activity, but maybe have trouble sleeping, this is gonna be a really great flow because we're getting into the joints and ligaments and hips and spine specifically. Just trying to give a quick little hit on the areas that sometimes feel our day-to-day -day pains. As always, take what you need, take what feels right, Definitely recommend grabbing pillows for support or blankets if you've got sensitive knees uh, for any kneeling postures. And if you have any questions, please reach out. You know, I love to hear all your comments and let's get to it. All right, we're coming into the flow. We're going to start in a seated position. Options to take toe squat. If you do, you're going to tuck your toes into the mat. As you can see, I'm bringing a block underneath my hips to help let the intensity be a little bit less. If you don't have a block, you can always use a stack of pillows or even a stack of books. If you are taking toe squat and all 10 toes are tucked into the mat, your hips are sinking towards your heels. Let your spine stay upright and breathe. Take whatever breaths you need to let you start to reset, let you hone into the practice that you're about to do. Maybe you take some shoulder rolls, rolling your shoulders back onto your back. So left and right shoulder moving together, or as you can see, maybe moving your left shoulder back and then your right shoulder back doing one at a time. Keep drawing your shoulders down your back and then you're gonna reverse it. You're gonna take some forward shoulder rolls, trying to roll your shoulders forward Maybe you even do one at a time as well. However many you need to do, you can always pause. And then just to reset, you're gonna roll your shoulders back just a couple times to draw your shoulders down your back again. From here, you'll remove the block under from under your hips if you had one. And then you're gonna make your way into tabletop. Stack your shoulders over your wrists and your hips over your knees. Take a moment to find your stance, find your footing here, making sure your toes and your hands are planted into the mat. Maybe you stay still. Maybe you take a wrist stretch. I'm starting by letting my fingers point to the left and to the right just to help get my wrists a little bit open. And then I'm flipping my wrist to point towards the front of the mat as my fingers point towards my knees. This doesn't really require a lot of movement. You can move a little bit if you want, but you're already twisting your fingertips around towards your knees, so you're gonna feel a lot here. As you can see, I'm leaning a little bit to the left and to the right, which you can do, but make sure that you're doing what feels right to you as you take this posture. To come out of it, let one hand come up from the mat to let your fingertips point forward and then the other. To do another reset, maybe you let the tops of your hands plant into the mat as your palms face up towards the sky. This is a really great place to sink your hips towards your heels and really stretch through your forearms, but you can always come kind of in and out of this like cat and cow as well. Again, you're taking what you need, which is always the best option. Once you feel nice and refreshed, feeling your wrists, Fully open, you're going to flip your fingertips to point back towards the top of your mat again. On your next inhale, cow pose, drop your belly, let your tailbone and gaze come to the sky. On your next exhale, cat pose, push the floor away, feel your left and right shoulder blades pull away from each other. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Take a couple more rounds. You can always pause this and take a few more if you feel like it. Once you've evened yourself out, 
you're going to come into a neutral tabletop position only when you're ready. From here, as you can see, I'm in neutral tabletop and now I'm going to set up for embryo pose, which is also known as child's pose. For child's pose or embryo pose, we're going to bring our knees together and our shins to touch, sink your hips back towards your heels. I'm using a block to bring the ground closer for my forehead and then I'm using a blanket under my knees just because my knees are feeling a little bit sensitive here. You can have the block at any setting for yourself for child's pose. Take what feels right to you. Take what feels right in this embryo pose. Let your low back and your spine relax into this. You can always take whatever you need to make this posture work for you. But just make sure that you focus on the sensation versus your form. With yin yoga, it's always about trying to figure out what works for you versus how you think you should look. Always the option to remove your props as well if you notice that you don't need them anymore. But just let yourself sink into this and let yourself find some reset. On your next inhale, start to shift back up into tabletop. Go ahead and move your block to the side. You might wanna keep the blanket under your knees. We're gonna come into heart melting pose, also known as puppy pose. So start to walk your hands forward. Your hips are staying over your knees and your chest is sinking towards the ground. Bring your forehead to the ground as well to allow yourself to feel this stretch in your spine, in your shoulders. It might feel like a little bit of pressure because your chest is being pulled down by gravity. If you need to lessen the intensity, you can always let your hips drop a little bit towards your heels, but the higher you keep them, the more stretch you'll feel. Always the option to kind of shift your hips around as well to find your, find your happy place here. If you need to, you can always bring a block under your chest too to let yourself sink into this. If you start to feel some tension in your shoulders, just widen your hands on your mat or on the ground wider than your shoulders. So if your hands go wider than your shoulders are, that should relieve some tension option to keep your forehead on the ground or if you want to get a little bit more stretch maybe you bring your chin to the ground to allow you to open up even further this will open up the front of your throat as well as create a little bit more um, sensation in your shoulders trust me this is something that, especially when we sit at computers all day or we're hunched over our phones all day, this is something that will really help you to reset your spine in a lot of ways. Just focus on breathing. Focus on keeping up with this moment in time. To come out of this, first let your forehead come back down. And then you might start to shift onto your forearms or walk your hands back under your shoulders to come back into tabletop. From here, go ahead and remove your blanket to the side just for now. You might need it in a second and then lower all the way down to your belly. We're setting up for some grounded scorpion. Grounded scorpion, you'll bring your right hand out towards the right side of your mat or room. Your right hand is in line with your right shoulder and then you kick your left foot up and over so it rests on the outside of your right leg. So as you can see, my left knee is bent because my left foot is on the outside of my right leg and now I am twisted onto my right shoulder and this is really gonna get into your right shoulder and your right spine. I also brought a block underneath my head because this really, really helps to keep my head in line with my neck and my torso and take a little bit of pressure out. You can always bring your left fingertips to the mat to kind of almost have cupcake fingers. So your fingertips are on the mat, but your palm isn't. And this might help bring a little bit of opening into your left shoulder. 
If you want to add on, you definitely can. You can reach your left arm up and around your back, creating kind of like a half bind, which will not only open up your left shoulder a little bit, it'll also get a little bit more sensation into your right shoulder. You really might feel this spine twist as well. No matter what, keep breathing. Keep residing right here. It's a lot, but you can do it. The more you breathe into it, the more release you'll find. Always remember, you're never stuck. If this is a lot of sensation for you, you can always take this a little bit shorter. Or you can even come out of this and then pause the video and then maybe you come back into it. Maybe you just need to readjust. To come out of this grounded scorpion, first unravel your left arm if you took the half bind. Remove your block from under your face as you start to roll back under, roll back onto your belly. Once you're back on your belly, maybe just bring both arms out wide as you let your spine reset, your hips come back to neutral. If you want to kind of take a little bit of movement to help you counteract this, then what you can do is you can lift your chest up just a little and then come up on your fingertips on both hands, cupcake hands with both hands, and then maybe drop one shoulder down to the mat, come back to center, and then drop your other shoulder down just to really kind of rinse out and feel a little bit of movement help bring you back to equilibrium. When you feel even, we're gonna go ahead and move over to the other side. So your left arm is coming out long, your left hand is reaching away from your left shoulder, and then your right leg will kick up and over and your right foot will rest on the outside of your left leg. You might want to notice if your toes are the only thing that's touching the mat. If your right foot can't plant on the mat, then maybe bring your foot a little bit closer to your left leg versus away from it. Again, you can cupcake finger your right hand onto the mat, or maybe you reach your right arm up and over like I'm demoing and taking a half bind. You can place the block underneath your head as well if that helps you to feel a little bit less sensation around your cervical spine area, your neck. Just focus on what you're feeling on this side. I say this a lot in my in-person classes and sometimes in my recordings, your sides are siblings, not twins. So you might be feeling this a little bit differently on this side than you did on the other side and that's okay. Just let yourself take what you need to be able to achieve the same amount of opening on this side that you did on the other. If you're ready to move on, start to unravel your right arm bind and roll back onto your belly, moving your block over to the side. Maybe you just let yourself relax, widening your hands away from your shoulders, like your arms are out to a T, or maybe you take that wide cobra again, lifting your chest up and dropping one shoulder down to the mat as you tent your fingers on the mat and then drop the other shoulder down just to kind of floss out through both shoulders now and see how much openness you've created in your shoulders and in your spine. When you've finished, you can go ahead and lower down and then we're gonna come into Sphinx Pose. So your forearms come down to the ground as your chest lifts up. Your forearms are in line with your shoulders and your palms are down on the ground. You can bring a little bit more engagement into this by pulling your fingertips back isometrically to open up through your chest and feel your left and right shoulder blades start to melt towards each other on your back. Since this is kind of a yin flow, if you want to make this more relaxed, if you have a block, you can place the block in front of you on the tall side and then rest your forehead on it. So you still have your sphinx arms and your chest is still open and you're drawing your left and right shoulder blades towards each other on your back. But with your forehead down, this gives your neck, your cervical spine, a little bit of a rest. And you might find yourself really sinking into this as your chest opens up and your spine has a little bit of a bend. 
always know if this block doesn't suit you, you can always move it to the side. Option to stay in Sphinx longer, or if you want a deeper back bend, we're going to come into seal. Start to walk your hands back really close to your chest. Widen your feet so much that your feet are off of the mat as the tops of your feet press down. Push yourself up into seal pose. Keep a micro bend in your elbows here to allow your chest to open up. Slightly tuck your tailbone to protect your low spine. Maybe you even let your head tilt back to open up through your throat. You're opening up through your whole front line and creating compression in your back line. On your next exhale, lower down. We don't hold it for long. We just hold it for enough. Start to come into crocodile pose. Stack one forearm over the other and let your forehead rest. Maybe you let your hips kind of swivel a little bit side to side just to allow your hips to open up, bringing your hips and spine back to a neutral state. All right, from here, we've just got a couple more hip openers and something for your spine. So this is going to be a fun one. We're going to come into half frog pose. So first things first, you're going to bend your left elbow to 90 degrees. Then from there, you're going to bend your left knee to 90 degrees as well. Your left knee is trying to come up towards your left elbow and it might not, and that's fine but you're in half frog. As you can see, I'm grabbing a blanket to cushion my left knee. Sometimes the inside of your knees aren't going to like your mat or maybe not like the floor if your knee is off of the mat. I also brought a block underneath my head just to see how this would feel as I feel this little bit of a spine opener, but also this big inner thigh opener. As you breathe here, just allow your inner thigh on your left to start to sink closer and closer into the mat. Feel this out too. You don't have to stay still, especially if you don't feel anything. Maybe drawing your left knee up a little bit more helps to create a little bit more sensation. Or maybe pressing your left knee into the ground, into your blanket, helps to bring a little bit more opening as well. Whatever it takes to help you feel the level of sensation you're looking for, this is where you can take it. This is where you let yourself figure it out. As you breathe here, maybe you just feel your torso sink deeper and deeper into the mat. Maybe you feel your hips start to open a little bit more. Your breath is your best friend here, and it's what's going to help you to feel that spinal release, that hip release. From here, we're going to come into supine twist. So this will be fun. You're gonna do a little bit of gymnastics on your mat, move your props over to the side, and then start to almost come onto your right side. Your left knee is, or your left knee is staying bent as you start to twist, and then your back is gonna gradually come to the ground your left knee is bent and boom, you are right in a supine twist. You can bring your left arm up and out to increase the side body twist, the side body stretch that you're feeling on your left side. Maybe you even use a block underneath your left knee if your left knee is floating off of the ground to allow you to stay in the sensation that you're feeling without feeling too much. Every breath in and every breath out here is so good for your spinal health. It's so good for your digestive health too. So let yourself just sink here for a little bit. If your mind starts to wander, just think to yourself three more breaths or two more breaths or one more breath. Start to remove your block from under your knee if you have one. And then we're going to come back to half frog. So start to roll back onto your belly with your left knee still bent. And then we're going to bring left leg back next to right leg. Take a moment to reset. Maybe you wiggle out your hips. I'm doing um, supine windshield wiper legs, bending my knees and letting my feet drop to the left and to the right just to kind of help reset my low back. 
and then when you're ready, coming into half frog on the right side. You're bending your right elbow to a 90 degree angle, your right knee is bent to a 90 degree angle, and then you're drawing your right knee up towards your right elbow. So again, if your sides are siblings, not twins, what do you want to do here if you're not feeling the same opening on this right side? For me, I'm actually taking a risk. I'm putting a block underneath my right knee instead of a blanket. The block is going to lift my knee up from the ground quite a bit. So that means it's going to increase the stretch to the ligaments as well as the muscles on my inner right thigh to help me feel a little bit more, to help me open a little bit more. This might not be for you. You definitely don't have to bring a block underneath your bent knee to feel something. Maybe you keep your forehead on the ground. Maybe you look in the opposite direction, giving your neck a little bit of a twist stretch is here as well. And this might accentuate the hip and spine opening that you feel. You can stay here longer if you want. If you're ready to move to supine twist, move the block away from your right knee first. And then maybe scoot yourself towards the center of your mat as you roll onto your left arm and your left side. And then keep rolling onto your back as you come into supine twist with your right knee bent. Your right arm can come up and out to help, again, open up your right side body. In this case, your right side body. Maybe you use that block underneath your right knee as well if your right knee is floating. As you breathe here, you're helping to bring equilibrium to the spinal stretch, to the spinal twist. Believe it or not, supine twists or spinal twists of any kind, they help hydrate our spine, which keeps our spine healthy. You need a healthy spine for so many reasons, but we never really think about trying to keep it hydrated or trying to do things like spinal twists. So if you want, you can let yourself stay here longer. You can pause this video and just let yourself sink a little bit deeper as you breathe in and breathe out. Keep your breath going no matter what. And when you're ready, Maybe you move your block to the side so you can roll back onto your belly, back into half frog with your right knee bent, and then bring your right leg back in line with your left. Maybe you take crocodile like I'm doing, stacking my forearms on top of each other again and letting my hips reset, letting my feet drop to the left and to the right. And then when you're ready, just from here, you're going to just flip onto your back your feet can come to the mat just for a moment as you reset and then let your legs come out long. We're coming into one last little hip opener. This is known as straddle pose. It also might look like happy baby to those who take vinyasa yoga. You're reaching for the outside or inside edge of your foot or your ankles or your shins. I moved my hands down my, to my ankles to feel a little bit of a deeper hip stretch. This is sometimes a little bit harder if you're wearing shorts or if your legs are sweaty. So maybe even use a towel on your hands to grip your ankles. Imagine that you're trying to keep your entire spine on the ground in this pose. So keeping everything from your shoulders to your tailbone pressed down. If you can't do that, that's a good indication to lower your hands down your legs. You can stay stationary or as you can see, I'm letting one leg straighten and then both legs straighten to take a really, really open straddle pose, essentially wide-legged forward fold on my back. This will really help your hamstrings to open, to allow the ligaments behind your knees to open, but only hold as long as you're comfortable. When you're ready, when you feel reset, this is where you can start to come into your Shavasana, your corpse pose, releasing your feet first and then allowing your legs to drop to the mat. You can let your legs come long or if you want to keep going with this hip release, you can come to recline butterfly, bringing the soles of your feet to touch and bending your knees. If you have a bolster or a pillow nearby, you can also lay on that to allow your chest to open up and help your spine feel a little bit good too. 
Maybe you let your legs come long or with the bolster or pillow along your spine, maybe you still take recline butterfly with your feet together and knees wide. Just take whatever you need to let yourself feel like your reset is complete. Well done, you did it. Hopefully you feel amazing from head to toe. As you start to lie on your back or maybe you're staying upright, seated, whatever feels good, take your end posture, pentacle pose or shavasana pose, whatever you refer to it, and just let yourself really just sink into the mat. You can even take a moment to close your eyes and just imagine that you feel all the different parts of your body starting to unclench and sink. Maybe you even let your breath help you. Maybe you take a breath in through your nose and then exhale, just feel your knees, your calves let go and sink into the mat. Maybe you take another inhale, exhale, maybe you feel your thighs, your hamstrings, your glutes, your hips just start to sink as well. Take another inhale, exhale, feel your entire low, mid torso sink into the mat. Take another inhale, exhale, feel your shoulders, your neck, your head sink into the mat. And just let yourself feel like gravity is just pulling you down so, so much more than you think, just letting you almost absorb into the mat, absorb into the ground, that you just feel everything just letting go, any tension that you feel in your jaw, in your face, in your shoulders, in your hips, everything is melting away from you for you to feel so heavy, so calm, so grounded as you take this rest posture. And when you're done, when you're done laying on your back or sitting upright, when you're done with your rest, then you can open your eyes slowly, take another breath in, breath out, and let yourself go on with the rest of your day.